Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss some of the most recent discoveries about our little friends tardigrades. Super strange creatures discovered back in 1773 by the German zoologist that basically decided to name them tardigrada, or slow walkers, mostly because of the way they walk. And though at first they were not super exciting, obviously in the last few decades so many exciting things were discovered about them, and mostly in regards to their extreme survivability. They seem to be able to withstand pretty much anything you throw at them, and seem to survive a lot of extreme conditions. As a matter of fact, in one of the recent videos, somewhere in the description, we've even discussed them being shot out of an extremely fast-moving bullet, just to basically see what happens. I mean, technically, it was a scientific experiment with a very specific goal, but I'm not going to spoil it here. Check out that video if you want to learn more. But the main point is that tardigrades, for some unknown reason, seem to be able to withstand extreme heat, extreme cold, extreme pressure, very very high radiation, and more importantly, have been able to do so for an extremely long time. And so a lot of recent studies wanted to actually find out how long and what this can actually tell us about the evolution of this super bizarre animal. But on top of this, they wanted to understand how it's able to withstand all of this, and what mechanisms it uses in its defense. For example, today we know that they seem to survive all of these extreme conditions by having this unusual superpower where they basically transform into what's known as the Tan state. Scientifically, this is known as cryptobiosis and hydrobiosis. And in essence, it's a type of a metamorphosis where the animal transforms into something else entirely for as long as it needs to. In this state, it seems to expel pretty much most of the water from inside the body, with the body itself turning into kind of a gelatinous state, and then basically enters an extremely long suspended metabolic state. Something that naturally we want to understand really well for various medical reasons, or even for reasons of, for example, space travel. Because obviously, if we can make human body do the same, we can technically preserve ourselves for a very long time. Over here, a quick side note. So there was a researcher in China that actually tried to introduce some of these elements, or technically some of these genes and some of these proteins, to various cells. And as you might learn from one of the previous videos, once again in the description below, even though technically it can work, there is a very major issue when it comes to more complex human cells. The issue being that it's technically sort of dangerous and can actually lead to serious medical conditions. But I'm not going to spoil it here, so check out the video if you want to know more. Either way though, we know that because of this state, these animals managed to survive a lot of extinction events and became extremely successful in pretty much major niches on the planet. For example, extremely recently I was reading about this super unusual tardigrade living inside the mud deep in the ocean, and it's known as Tanarctus ubulubus. You can google the name just to see what it looks like, but the appearance is purely alien. It looks like something out of a science fiction book, and it seemed to have lived on the planet for an extremely long time. But because it's hidden deep in the oceans and lives in the mud in the oceans, naturally it's not something we understand very well. But based on DNA analysis of various tardigrades, to date the researchers believe there were basically two separate transition stages from marine to terrestrial habitats, sometimes in the tardigrade history, basically resulting in two major families, or technically two major classes, eutardigrades, which is the most popular one, that's usually the images that we always see, heterotardigrades, that look just a little bit different in terms of morphology. For example, heterotardigrades quite often have armor, an armor that makes them look like little turtles. It's not entirely clear what they're trying to protect themselves from, but we know that both classes seem to be very successful independent of their morphology. But both classes, despite hundreds of millions of years of evolutionary differences, are able to create these unusual tan states where they can resist pretty much everything for a long time. And so here one of the first questions researchers were trying to answer is, when exactly did they actually form this ability, and did this help them survive all of the major extinction events we know of? But answering this question is a little bit challenging, for one obvious reason. These things are super tiny, and they're not particularly good at forming fossils. But we do have some fossils that were accidentally trapped in various types of amber in the last 200 million years. And these were discovered completely by accident because very often this amber contains something else. For example, like in this case, some kind of an ant. And while well, the first such amber ever discovered was by Kenneth Cooper back in 1964. He named this species 
Bjorn Ligai, technically named Bjorn after a character in the Tolkien's novel who was able to transform into a bear. But back then, when it was just discovered, we just didn't really have good enough telescopes to figure out what's happening here. And to be more specific, it was impossible to determine exactly what kind of a species this was and where all of this fit in the evolutionary process. And even since then, we only actually discovered four known tardigrade fossils, all preserved in various types of amber, but all from different time periods. Although all before the dinosaurs went extinct, so something like 70 million years ago, 85 million years ago, with I think the oldest one being almost 200 million years old. And so the most recent study that was just released was finally able to identify everything, answering questions about their origin. This was using a confocal fluorescence microscopy that allows us to conduct very accurate observations of super tiny things. And more specifically, it allows us to do this in amber, something that's usually somewhat difficult. And so here they discovered previously unseen details. And specifically, the structure of legs and claws which are usually very important in placing these creatures in the tardigrade evolutionary tree. Normally for tardigrades, it's actually their claws that seem to be used for the overall identification. Mostly because the overall body plan has not changed much for millions of years. But the claws have. And so a few of these species found in amber turn out to be eutardigrades as well, from the family known as Hypsibidae. And though this particular species of tardigrade has long been extinct, other species from Hypsibidae are still alive today, with the fossils in the amber appearing extremely similar to modern tardigrades, with claws curving towards the body being a little bit shorter than those curving away from it, which suggests a morphological connection. But more specifically, by discovering that there is a connection between them, it allowed the researchers to now establish the overall timeline, potentially discovering when tardigrades developed their superpowers. And so here, by looking at the overall timeline, researchers worked out when cryptobiosis most likely started. Now, cryptobiosis by itself is actually not just one thing, as tardigrades actually have other strategies in order to survive. But based on this work, the researchers believe it was sometime during Carboniferous period, approximately 360 to maybe 299 million years ago. But importantly, right before the very powerful extinction event known as the Great Dying. This happened sometimes 252 million years ago, and it was this ability that potentially allowed them to survive one of the deadliest events in Earth history. It's actually known as the Great Dying for a reason. But more importantly, they then survived several other extinction events, and in the process seemed to not have changed much. Sort of implying that this is basically as perfect as it gets when it comes to tiny animal life. But since the first tardigrades, or I guess the ancestors of these unusual animals, appeared approximately 540 million years ago, emerging before the Cambrian period, here we actually have an example of a very unusual animal that seems to have evolved in almost perfect body and a perfect technique to survive on Earth for an extremely long time, making this one of the biggest successes in evolution, or at least in terms of tiny animals. With the additional study that you can also find in the description, also figuring out exactly how these animals are able to survive extremely high radiation. Here, Courtney Clark Hatchell and her team used this tardigrade known as H. exemplaris to change its DNA just a little bit in order to find out if it's able to survive radiation. And they actually discovered that it seems to repair its own DNA by inducing a lot of free radicals inside its body. So basically, free radicals, or those oxygen atoms with an unpaired electron that in most animals usually cause damage and do produce mutations in DNA in general, in tardigrades seem to suddenly appear when there is any kind of stress. So basically, somehow they generate all of this to initiate the next step. And that next step involves an amino acid cysteine that reacts with free radicals and then somehow starts to dramatically transform them into that unusual tan state. With all of this being confirmed, once the researchers modified their DNA, which prevented cysteine oxidation process and made tardigrades incapable of entering this state. And so even here, these tardigrades seem to have found a very bizarre way to survive extreme environments. Something that's usually damaging to most animal cells seems to work for these little guys. Which is once again why it's quite unlikely that we're ever going to be able to use same techniques in the human body. But overall, still an exciting discovery, and a discovery that takes us just a little bit closer in understanding these very bizarre but very successful creatures that survived on planet Earth for a very long time.
But at least for now, that's all I wanted to mention. In one of the future videos, we're actually going to discuss some other discoveries. Plus, I finally want to actually catch one of these guys and possibly make a video using the microscope. Uh, not for my benefit. It's actually because of my five-year-old son who's super curious about tardigrades now and just wants to see one in real life. And so yeah, come back for that video in the future and subscribe and stuff. But if you want to learn about some previous discoveries, check out the links in the description. And thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.